At 8.32 a.m. on Sunday, May 18, 1980, an earthquake creating the largest landslide in recorded history led to one of the biggest eruptions in modern times in Washington state. The mud flow went down the Toodle River Valley, wiped out bridges, wiped out roads, and destroyed so many different structures. I was lucky enough to gain access with my dad, who worked for the state at the time, to witness some of this destruction firsthand. It was absolutely incredible. Even at my young age, I was fascinated by what I was seeing. Singed trees, trees knocked down like toothpicks. These were old growth timbers that were just flattened and all the bark stripped off the wood as well. It was incredible. We're also fortunate enough to witness a small eruption while inside the blast zone taking pictures in the mountain. And I got a very rare glimpse of an eruption. Spirit Lake was a beautiful lake that was right at the base of the mountain. And the landslide completely displaced the lake, heaving the lake all the way up on the ridges, which brought down all the trees that were blasted down by the blast zone just moments before, completely displacing the lake. The lake rose over 200 feet, killed everything in the lake and all the surrounding wildlife along with it. It was really quite incredible. The University of Washington was granted access to study the evolution of the lake and recovery over the decades since the eruption. I still have a tough time wrapping my mind around the magnitude of what happened on that day. I can't even imagine what that would have been like to be anywhere near that when that happened, the sounds and just that the, the catastrophic nature of what happened. It's just incredible. I've been following the mountain's recovery and fishing a lot of the lakes that are in and around Mount St. Helens for, for my entire life, and also been following the evolution of the recovery of Spirit Lake. In August 2008, a very good friend of mine were invited on a fish study to the lake where it was rumored that these fish had recovered and recovered in enormous size and population. So we trekked down with a couple of fish biologists from Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife and cast a fly rod out into the lake's edge. And oh my God, what we found was incredible. These fish were healthy, large. They were, they looked like steelhead in the lake. It was unbelievable. Any fly that you threw out there on the surface would be just devoured by these massive fish. It wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. <laughs> I could have thrown a piece of bark on That's a hook what I'm out there about. and they would have hammered it. The size and health and girth of these fish were unbelievable. And I will never forget this experience in catching nearly 30 inch trout in this lake. It was such a thrill, something that I will never forget. Today, this lake remains closed to study and these fish live without much disruption from any anglers. Hopefully one day we'll have the opportunity to fly fish this before the population overtakes the ecosystem and the sizes begin to diminish. But that day was one of the most exciting days that I've ever had in volunteering for the fish and wildlife and conducting this study. Incredible. Mount St. Helens is one of the most incredible places on earth and I'm so lucky to have this monument right in my own backyard. All right, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in and kind of looking back in history of this amazing place. I really do appreciate it. All right, guys, to the next video, fish on.